guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about how to not be starving when you're in a calorie deficit or on a weight loss diet. I'm Amy. If you're new here, I'm a blogger at Healthy where I write about and talk about weight loss ideas, strategies, really delicious meal ideas, recipes, and things that can help you reach your weight loss goals and not hate it. So let's get into it. Now, the last few months, while I was trying to lean out for a recent bikini contest and lose about 10 pounds, I posted a lot of my daily meals on Instagram. Well, a lot of those days I had 1200 calories and a lot of people would ask me if I'm starving. Why, like, how can I do, how can I eat 1200 calories and not um, be very hungry? And the truth was, I actually did not get hungry on 1200 calories. And so I really thought about a lot of reasons why this could be because normally my appetite's insatiable. I love to be full. I love to eat a lot of food. I could out eat anybody. In fact, another one of my problems is I eat really fast. I'm always the first one done with a meal. And so eating fast, being able to eat, eat high volumes of food obviously was the reason I had a weight problem in the first place. I've never had an eating disorder. I just love food. That's really my, my whole story. And I would use, of course, I would use food a lot to, you know, cope with being a young mom and uh, all those normal, I think is normal behavior. So I've really thought about how I can be on 1200 calories and not be starving. And so here are the things I've outlined that might help you too if you are on a calorie deficit and trying to reach your weight loss goals. But before I start, my disclaimer is if you do have an eating disorder, this is not the video for you. Please seek help and find somebody you can talk to. Okay, now on with it. This video is for you if you are trying to lose weight, you're trying to diet, you're trying to cut calories, but you just love food too much. You love socialize to socialize while you're eating. You love being in the kitchen and snacking on the food that's there. You like going out to eat and you just like food in general and need to eat less of it. This is the video for you. With that, my first hack is to realize that every calorie counts. And because I, I know every calorie counts, I'm not gonna waste calories on foods that aren't gonna be satisfying. For example, I'm not gonna drizzle oil over my broccoli. And you can do it after you've reached your weight loss goals. I've been able to be fl more flexible after I've reached my goals, but during a deficit, if you're putting 150 calories worth of oil on broccoli and all you're eating is the broccoli and you don't notice the oil, then it's not going to keep you as satisfied as just eating 30 calories of broccoli because you can have the same amount of broccoli. So every calorie counts. Oils are one thing. Dressings are another. If you had 110 calorie dressing, versus a 45 calorie dressing, I promise you will not notice the difference and you'll save 60 calories. And when you're only eating 1200, 60 calories is a big deal. 60 calories is an extra two cups of broccoli or an extra, um, an extra two slices of very low calorie bread, which me leads me to another one. If you can have two slices of Sara Lee 45 calorie bread, or one slice of 110 calorie classic bread, you're gonna feel like you ate more with the two slices of the low calorie bread. So every calorie counts, most important. The second thing is to, because every calorie counts, to make substitutions where possible for lower fat items that can be substituted for higher fat items. So if you're baking, you could substitute applesauce for oil, if you are making pancakes and skip the, skip the full calorie syrup in favor of sugar-free syrup. So making substitutions where you honestly can't tell the difference is a big help. So you can eat more food. This is, and I know I've dissed on the keto diet before, but 
A lot of products marketed as keto friendly are very high in calories, especially a lot of the recipes I've seen on TikTok and Instagram. It'll be keto friendly, I don't know, protein bar. And it's like 350 calories. Oh heavens no, I'm not gonna eat a bar that's 350 calories where I could have like a huge pile of dinner for 350 calories and it would be a lot more satisfying. So watch out for things like that. Another hack I have is to really slow down. One of the, I've, I've written an article on this, I'll link it in the description, but it was very pivotal in helping me to lose weight um, as far as mindset goes, and that is just to be present and slow down while you're eating food. Let me explain. I read a book, The Joy of Half a Cookie. I had loaned it to somebody and for years I couldn't find it. And so, I, and I just remembered who I loaned it to and she moved cross country. So I finally bought another one. You can buy used books on Amazon and it's the best thing ever. So I got it for like $3. I don't know why I didn't get it before. But The Joy of Half a Cookie talks a lot about how we can subconscious or unconsciously eat a meal and 20 minutes later we're hungry again because we don't even remember eating the meal. If we're distracted on Instagram or I used to have one of my big problems like 10 years ago was I used to get the newspaper delivered. I loved getting the newspaper delivered for so many years and I loved eating breakfast while I read the newspaper with a bowl of cereal. Except that because I wanted the meal to last a long time before I got to my day, and because I really liked reading the paper, when I was done with my cereal, I'd pour another bowl, and I'd keep eating, and I'd pour another bowl, and I'd keep eating. And I don't even know how many bowls I would eat because I, don't re I didn't remember. It was so unconscious. But now, if I slow down, which is hard for me because I'm a fast eater, if I slow down and I'm really present with every bite and I taste it and I enjoy it and I remember it, I can eat a lot less food because like the book, The Joy of Half a Cookie, she says in there, your 10th bite is no better than the first bite. In fact, the, in fact, she would argue the first bite is the best bite and you have diminishing returns after that. So why eat 10 bites when the best of the deliciousness is in your first few? So slowing down and being present with my meal and being present during mealtime, huge, huge factor in helping me be satisfied and not starving on 1200 calories. Another hack is smaller plates and smaller utensils and this has been tested, researched, and then debunked. So take it for what it's worth, but a lot of those meals I posted on my Instagram of my full day of eating, they were on small plates. In fact, most people would think, oh my gosh, that's so much food. But it was because it was a small plate. I'll show you the plates I normally use. Um, so I have, can you see this? I have this size plates, like like dessert dinner plates, and then I have big plates, right? So if I just got you one of my standard plates versus one of the plates I would take my meal pictures on, that's the difference. So I feel like when I'm using this plate, I feel like I'm eating a lot more food you're not eating more food. It just seems like you're eating more food. And I think our brains are the most important thing when it comes to not being hungry on a deficit. Meal timing has been important for me to not feel like I'm hungry. If I start eating at 5 a.m., by noon, I could have eaten all my calories for the day. And that's a really hard place to be in when you've had 1200 calories by 12 o'clock and you are awake for eight more hours. I've never been able to go the rest of the day without eating. I just always would be over my calories. But if I start eating at nine, 
and then I have another meal at noon and then another uh, meal at three and then a meal at five. I feel like I'm eating often enough that it's not impossible to moderate my intake throughout the day. So that is a very important part. A, a very important part of not being hungry all day is three big filling meals and one high protein snack has been so helpful in helping me stay this way and keep get the weight off and keep it off. But also because it sets parameters, it sets a beginning and an end to meal time. When I was a young mom, and I know if you you know raised kids or if you are home all day, the all day becomes an eating window. In fact, I felt like I was eating every time I walked into the kitchen, just something, a bite, a nibble, a crumb, getting food for the kids all day long. But once I put these bookends around mealtime, not only were the meals so much more satisfying because you're sitting down and enjoying the food instead of reaching your hand into a, a box of cereal, it keeps you satisfied. I promise it does. Grazing all day, I was never full, never satisfied. I didn't think I was eating that much because I never sat down to a meal. I never sat down to a full meal. So meal timing and then three meals a day, one snack, not grazing in between. Very important. Another way that I was never hungry during a deficit is to, to just practice high volume eating. So those three meals I'm talking about, I can add a lot of vegetables or low calorie fruit for under 100 calories and double the volume of the meal. I can eat until I'm like physically full and I love it. <laughs> I love to be full. I don't like to leave a meal and have a little room left. I want to have all the food I can eat for that meal. So I'm gonna do a lot more posts about high volume meals and you know what they are. It's just more food for the same amount of calories because the food is propped up by something like cauliflower rice instead of regular rice and a big green salad with like 10 cups of, of greens or lettuce. You can do a high volume meal pretty easily. And lately, and this I got from the girl I traveled to the bikini show with, um, she's like, oh, have you not tried cabbage in your eggs? And I hadn't. She's like, it, you know, egg whites and cabbage, like it's a lot of volume for very few calories. So I started doing it as soon as I got back and I love it. I, I, I don't know how she does it. I don't really put it into my eggs. I just saute it before and put it on top and it's kind of awesome. So high volume. Know your crutches. I do have some crutches. I gum drinks like, um, have you seen my drink cupboard? Another thing I should share. I'll, I'll do some, I'll, I'll, I'll get some video <laughs> footage of it, but my drink cupboard's kind of outrageous. Lots of crystal light. It's just crystal light, neo drops. Um, I have a soda stream over here that um, keeps keeps me satisfied. I, I like to drink something sweet at the end of a meal and it kind of also gives me that bookend for that end of the meal. So drinks are a crutch for me. It's low calorie, obviously. Low calorie drinks. And apparently there's some viral TikTok drink recipes that people are all making fun of, but I don't think it's, it's worthy of being made fun of at all. I think it's brilliant. Like you should be able to make some exciting, interesting drinks that barely have any calories. Very, it feels very indulgent. So give that a try. Another crutch is gum, mints. I always have many packs of gum. I keep them in the car, I keep them in my desk, I keep them in the kitchen. While I'm baking, I'll chew gum just so I don't feel the need to snack on the foods that I'm baking. So that works really well for me. Another hack I have for not being hungry on a calorie deficit is opposite to being present during mealtime, when it's not meal time to be distracted. So if you, if you love your job, great, work harder. 
If you are a stay-at-home mom and you need something to keep busy, get a hobby. If you are an empty nester like me, I work a little bit and then I do some indulgent YouTube gossip channel watching, <laughs> which is, it's silly, but it keeps, it keeps me distracted. I have a list of, you know how they always say, if you're hungry and it's not mealtime, go on a walk. Or if you've already eaten and you want to eat again, you know, go work out, go climb a mountain. And to that I say, that's the last thing I want to do. Eating is way more fun than these hard things. So I had to make a list of things that were not hard and did not, what was almost things I would look forward to was not mentally taxing was like just so I could disconnect because of course when we go to food when you don't have an eating disorder and you go to food a lot of times it's just to like numb out from either the monotony or the boredom or the stress of life and if you have other things that help you do that and for me it's YouTube gossip channels then that's a good distraction between meals when you rather eat because you're stressed so Staying distracted. Increasing the protein and fiber of your meal. So critical. I've mentioned in videos before, but I did not realize how much my high carb diet was making my appetite crazy. And I've always been a healthy eater, no question. I'm, I've been eating healthy since I was 16 years old. But I also just overate because I like food. So switching to higher protein, high fiber. I'm not, I don't do low carb per se, but it is lower than most people. Just because I am only five feet tall, I try to stay between 100 and 150 grams of carbs a day. And I try to limit those carbs to oatmeal, rice, fruit, vegetables, squash, just some high fiber carbs um, and some quick acting carbs for running. So higher protein, higher fiber, fewer carbs can make you not feel so hungry. And then the second to the last thing is to know that the few, first few days are actually going to be hard. The first few days I am the hungriest when I try to be in a calorie deficit. But after a few days, if you can, if you can ride it out, if you can ride it out for three or four days, your appetite really does come down with less calories in your body. You just need less. So ride it out for a couple days, get some quick wins, and then you're not going to find yourself going back to the pantry over and over like a habit like you used to. Another thing that helps me stay on a a lower calorie diet is to clean up my food environment. And by that, I mean, don't keep things in the pantry that you enjoy overeating. The last four or five weeks of my uh, bikini prep, the calorie deficit, I actually cut out Greek yogurt and sugar-free pudding mix because I can eat a lot of it. And it was just easier not to have it around. Otherwise, for, for example, yesterday, I think I ate four cups, which I'm not proud of, but I just really like it. <laughs> so if I don't want to keep pouring bowls and bowls of yogurt, then I just, I just going to keep it out for a few weeks. I fully believe Greek yogurt is, a health, is healthy for you. No question. That's not what it's about. It's about foods that I like a little too much. Keeping it out of the house just till you reach your goals, then you can buy it again. So cleaning up your food environment. And then the very last thing, and this might be a little bit controversial, I don't know, but your thoughts about the number will make you hungrier than the actual number itself. Let me preface this by saying hunger in itself is not an emergency. Just because you're hungry and you're trying to lose weight doesn't mean doesn't mean you should eat everything. I don't believe that that's what mindful eating is about. 
I think you need to set boundaries. I think you need to set parameters. We're adults. We can set boundaries for ourselves and say no because our brains and our bodies are so disconnected that you're probably hungry because you've been overeating for so long. So hunger is not an emergency, but the only reason I say that your thoughts about the number will make you hungrier than the actual number is because there's so many people telling you 1200 calories is unhealthy, 1200 calories is not sustainable, 1200 calories, this and that. And I will find you a lot of research that can say the opposite. In fact, there's a whole, whole big swath of research talking about low calorie dieting for longevity. And some of the people who live the longest actually stay very low calorie. So first of all, don't need to listen to what everyone says. Oh, you'll be starving on 1200 calories. Oh, you'll be starving on 1500 calories. Well, everyone's different. You might not be, but the time that this came to light for me and really, um, and really had me shocked was when I thought I was eating 1200 calories and I was starving and I was tired and all these things. And then finding out I was miscounting one of the foods I was eating and I was actually eating 1500 plus calories. That's a huge difference. Then when I realized I was eating 1500, suddenly I wasn't hungry and tired anymore. I mean, come on. <laughs> How smart do I have to be to realize, okay, a lot of times we can eat 1200 calories not, and not know it because we're not tracking and be just fine. And then other times we can eat 2000 calories, think we're eating 1200 and we're starving. If there's a way for you to do a blind test on yourself, th that would be very shocking to you. So knowing that even on 1200 calories, there's lots of people that can thrive, that can have lots of energy, that can not be hungry and be just fine. Knowing that, don't think about the number. Don't think about how that number is going to make you tired or make you hungry. And one last thing, I, this does have to be said, and I don't talk about it enough, is getting enough sleep. First of all, you can't eat while you're sleeping, so it really helps a lot with not having hunger pains. Um, but getting enough sleep helps me make better choices when I'm eating and helps me not eat in response to fatigue. So a lot of times we'll start getting tired around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so we'll be like, eh, I need something to eat. But if you get some really good sleep, you might not. So that does help, and it has been a benefit to me. So those are the things I have. I hope you've learned something. I hope you'll try something. I hope you'll try to be in a calorie deficit if you want to lose weight and not think it's awful. And if you have other tricks or hacks or strategies that you employ to stay low cal, let me know in the comments. And finally, like and subscribe this video so I can share more with you and have a great week.